And we're starting with a uh, wine estate from Stellenbosch uh, region in mm -hmm. South Africa. And this is a Lavenir estate. And it's a 2016 MCC Brut. So mm -hmm. MCC is quite a, a cool thing in South Africa. It's their take on the traditional French method. Of oh, uh, method of traditional. Method, method of traditional. Course. So it's method cap classique. Ooh. And very, very, very posh. <laughs> and um, this is so a posh. Chardonnay uh, Pinot Noir blend. Okay. And it's had a secondary fermentation um, after bottling. And it's been... Um, been, been uh, fermenting and then in the bottle for another 30 months. Uh, so 2016 vintage. Lovely. Let's have a crack. I think Let's we try not to take out oh, the camera crew. Take <laughs> <laughs> I hope he knows what he's doing here. Tell me a bit. Oh, here we go. What is, that was very professional of you, Ross. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> there she goes. I love it. That was the car trip in. All right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So the brand, tell me more about Lavenier. What so Lavenier have been in our portfolio for uh, just under a year. Mm -hmm. and they are uh, an estate in Stellenbosch. They've been around for a very long time, and they traditionally focus on the key brands, or, or, or South Africa's uh, prime brands of uh, Pinotage and Chenin Blanc. Mm -hmm. And then they, they obviously ventured out and did a bit of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir for, for this. Yeah, and cheers. Um, yeah, cheers. This looks beautiful. You can tell go. it's a vintage because of the, the colour. It's just Happy Sparkling Week, everyone. Uh, happy Sparkling Week, everyone. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, delightful. Mm. Actually, it's, um, it's always quite interesting because, you know, people think of bubbles and they think of uh, method traditional. Mm. They go straight for like champagne and you're sitting in that $50, $60 mark. Is Absolutely. that the kind of, is that where these kind of wines sit? Or uh, this is around about just under $40 a bottle. Okay. And, um, and the production level? Small. So Lavinia does small batch production, uh, specializing, as I said, in, in small batch, mm. uh, single block uh, Pinotage, single block Shannons. And then they've got a bit of Bordeaux blend in, in the portfolio as well and then the sparkling. So uh, small production. All, all the guys that we work with are generally small production with yeah. the exception of one or two. But then I also get <coughs> shocked at that because it's like small production for $40. You know what I mean? Like South Africa. South Africa. Best kept secrets <laughs> of the wine world. <laughs> <laughs> and let's, as we're sipping along on this, guys, and I'm sorry that you can't taste that, but this is absolutely delicious. It's got all that beautiful apple core still coming through. Mm. A beautiful, it's not brioche or anything, is it though? Like it's, I'm it's finding got a bit of, bit of breadcrumb on the back. The, yeah, but yeah. But I love this. This is gorgeous. It's so it needs lovely. It's a little bit colder, but this is perfect. That's all right. We, like, we don't Happy want things too cold. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, on that, let's talk, let's talk about South Africa. You know, tell me about South oh. Africa as a wine region. When did it start? You know, what should people expect from it? All that kind of thing. So South Africa has... Um, it's been around in the wine industry for a very long time. Uh, we've got a history of winemaking which spans about 300 years. Uh, and this started, um, or, or firstly, it's more described as um, bridging the gap, the style of South African wine, between Old World and New World. Mm -hmm. um, so most of the wines are made using uh, New World uh, techniques, uh, but they often have uh, stylistic um, similarities to the Old World, so to France and to European wines. Mm -hmm. um, our oldest uh, wine estate is in Constantia, oh, and okay. uh, the, the wines there were famous for being supplied to Napoleon Bonaparte when he was in exile in St. Helena Island. Uh, Jane Austen writes about um, these wines in her novels, and they were served in English courts in the you know, bygone era. <laughs> and that was the, the Vin de Constance, a uh, very wow. sweet wine. So we've got really cool history uh, yeah. in this space. Um, and, and yeah, uh, the wines um, themselves, um, so, the Dutch East India Company is where this whole thing started, and that was in um, 1652. Oh, wow. So we're 300 years old, plus. Um, there was a, a Dutch surgeon sent to Cape Town uh, on a mission to plant fresh fruit and vegetables because the sailors that were doing the, the, the trip through to India were suffering from scurvy. Ah, so cool. his, his mission was to be uh, sent into Cape Town to plant vines. So that was in 1652, and seven years later, on the 2nd of February, uh, 1659, the first um, harvest uh, was pulled out and we believe, or we, we think, uh, and there's some documentary that says that they believe there were some Chenin Blanc vines on that ship, but how do we have proved you that? You don't know. So I, no. I think we can never actually no. prove the history, but hey, it makes for a great story, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's what it's all about. And then, you know, uh, I think part of the, the renaissance is uh, up until uh, 1990, we were put in, in, in sort of a, a, a wine a backwater people didn't really think of South Africa as a fine wine producing area. It was more bulk wines. Yeah. Um, and then in 1990... Um, it was famous for brandy, right? Like, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Lots of, well, most of the, uh, most of the um, vines were used for distillation. Mm. So a hell of a lot of brandy was made. Uh, and then in 1990, with the, the change in the government, uh, markets opened up. And uh, we had a, an influx of flying winemakers. Uh, you know, pretty much like there was a bit of that coming in and out of Australia as mm -hmm. well. And um, we saw 
um, the adaptation of new winemaking techniques, um, smarter ways of doing things, and the quality just went through the roof. Um, there was a bit of a focus put on Cabernet and Chardonnay and Shiraz, yep. along with um, what South Africa already had in the ground. Chen Blanc and another grape, which we'll talk about. Oh, in a minute, I can't so. wait to talk about that other grape. Actually, <laughs> I'm very actually, excited. Actually, getting back to what you're saying, yeah. Um, up to and into 1990, less than 30 percent of the grapes were used uh, for table wine making. 70 percent was used for distillation. Wow. And then by 2003, those numbers had reversed. So 70 percent plus was going into table wine. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so... Um, but were the winemakers... <coughs> like, but they weren't born and bred winemakers from South Africa. These are fl winemakers no, flying into... I think the education came through yeah. uh, for the local winemakers. Um, South Africa's got a really good agricultural college called Elsenberg, which is okay. like uh, UC Davis in California, which is like um, Roseworthy uh, in Adelaide and uh, Charles Sturt University in yep. Australia. So very, very high-class levels of education, but there was more interest in, in the industry. Mm. And these guys came in and showed... South Africa, what was happening everywhere else, and they went, "All oh, right, let's that's go." That's awesome. Yeah. Oh wow, that's great. Well, yeah. look, we started pretty good. I think. Lavinia. I think, think? Lavinia has it's forty it's bucks a bottle. I think we've done pretty well. Like you know, everyone who knows me on this show knows I'm <coughs> a complete champagne snob. Uh, <laughs> that I I would I would be challenged if it was a blind tasting to know whether that was a vintage champagne or not. So I'm impressed. Thanks for bringing that in. 